ship crewman. What was the creepiest experience you had out on the ocean? US Marine here. During a float on a boat to operation. Top secret. Destination. Unknown. One of our own were lost at sea. I guess they just jumped overboard at night or something. Kinda depressing. That's a crappy way to die. Anyways. Their coffin rack was adjacent to mine. And we left the rack made. And for some reason. The sheets kept on getting messed up every day. It was pain in the butt to keep making the sheets we stripped the rack. And we figured that no one should be sleeping in there since there were plenty of other vacant racks in the berthing. But someone would keep making the rack. And messing the sheets up in the morning. I know aircraft carriers are big. But could someone really fake their own death on one and get away with it? There's no way someone would be sleeping there. Because we'd notice someone climbing up on the top bunk. And the duty would have been posted at the entrances to the berthing. It was just creepy seeing the rack being made neatly and then messed up in the morning. A friend, a captain, asked me to help deliver a sailboat from featuring Lauderdale to Houston. I was a somewhat inexperienced sailor, only sailed for fun a few times, short trips, but he was able to get me $100 a day so I said why not, I was between jobs, it was three of us, me, my captain, who is a very experienced sailor, and the new owner of the ship. Once we got to Anna Maria Island on the west coast of Florida we prepared for the longest haul of our trip. The first time we'll be away from the coast going through the Gulf of Mexico. We did a 4 hour shift. Then you'll get to sleep or do whatever for 8 hours until your next 4 hours. The eerie part for me was my shift. Alone. Pitch black darkness in the middle of the ocean. No moon out. You also have to avoid a lot small oil rigs. Some still active. Some not active. Some marked with lights. Some not. You'd hear explainable sounds etc. I dunno if it was just my head freaking with me. But that one overnight shift was pretty tense and scary for me. Towards the end of my shift we hit some pretty bad rain and rough seas. My captain took over. I went to bed. I get woken up a bit later to crazy rough seas. I go back on deck. And my captain and the owner of the ship just yell. We have to turn back. We lost our GPS. Apparently the wind knocked it off the top of the mast and into the ocean. So there we are now. Rough seas, pitch black and with no GPS. Luckily my captain is old school and knows how to sail with just a chart. So we made it back to Anna Maria and purchased a new GPS. The whole event was just surreal and I was definitely worried a few times. The rest of the trip was uneventful. The next nights had nice bright moons. Calm seas and that made it a little less eerie. This is why you should always have an emergency backup compass. My buddy and I were about 20 miles west of the Lower Keys, in the Gulf of Mexico. We were on his Bertram looking for Dolphin and Wahoo when we see a boat in the distance heading our direction. We weren't under power or anything, just drifting and drinking beer. The boat gets closer and we see smoke. It was pretty much a burned out cabin at that point, but still running. It just idled by. We yank our lines up and go run it down. Luckily no charred corpses that I could see. I kick it into neutral with a gaff and we decided to see where it came from. On the way we reported its location to Coast Guard. We drove that general direction for probably 10 miles. Didn't see a single thing. No other boats. No life jackets. Nothing. Hopefully the people who were on that boat were picked up safety. It was like something from Walking Dead. Just a burned out boat floating on by. Not ship crew, but one of three guys sailing a 45 foot Morgan from Antigua to Daytona Beach, Florida. I had zero crossing experience prior to this trip. Anywho, I pictured getting tan, pina coladas and white sand beaches. Nope, it was open ocean, at least by landlubber standards, and three hour shifts round the clock manning the helm. GPS and radar while the other two guys chilled during the day or slept at night. It was hard as heck. And I've done a few things considered somewhat tough and out of the ordinary. The biggest worry while on autopilot are the bazillions of ships flying around throughout the Caribbean. Yes, you can see them from many miles away. Especially at night and with the help of radar. But they sneak up on you. And a 600 foot freighter captained by a possibly hammered crewman in the wheelhouse at 2 in the morning wouldn't even feel a bump as it split us into kindling. So, one night I'm on shift. Trying to stay awake with Snickers and coffee. And it's so black you couldn't discern the horizon line. Just stars. Blackness. 
and the running lights of lots of far off freighters going in all directions. I proceed to take my occasional 360 degree glance around like I was told to make sure there's also nothing coming up aft, and omf gourd. There's this giant round yellow light stretching what seemed like across the entire sky directly behind me. Clearly, this was a freighter directly behind our boat with some kind of a spotlight on the bow trained on us and about to gobble us up like Jonah. The rush of terror was so great, I couldn't even stomp on the deck to waken my mates let alone scream for help. So, I just accepted my impending death and wondered if it would be the impact or drowning that killed me first. Then I focused a little harder and realized it wasn't a ship at all. It was a full moon rising. I can't describe the immediate relief. It was like awaking from the most terrifying dream you've ever had and realizing. Holy smokes. I'm not running from Freddy Krueger. I'm in my bed. Sailing a crossing like that I learned is hours and hours and sometimes days and days of endless boredom punctuated with short periods of death and ten. Defcon 1 is the highest alert level, with the greater the number, the lower the guard. I worked on a cruise ship going from UK to Spain and back, cross channel ferry really but quite big 37,000 tons, 2,500 passengers. We had a turnaround of about 4 hours in Bulboa and at this time I worked in the restaurant and after we had cleaned up they started hailing a passenger over the loudspeakers to disembark. I remember he had a slightly comical name like Passenger Peckham or Passenger Pickles or something. Then the managers came and told us to start searching our stations for him. Every bit of the ship was getting searched, and they kept hailing him and us searching right up until the outbound passengers started embarking. They even had us searching in little cupboards and in the fridges etc. Obviously Passenger Pickles had jumped off in the night into the cold Atlantic. So another time we were heading off at night during the winter gales and about 5 hours offshore around midnight I finished my shift and headed off to a crafty little platform at the stern where I could toke my nightly reefer in peace and I saw the massive bright ship's spotlight scanning slowly and methodically back and forth across the waves. I guessed this was for a jumper and sitting there slightly baked I could imagine perhaps glimpsing a last sight of some poor doomed soul struggling in the chop and wake before disappearing off into the vast black expanse of the Atlantic. An office later confirmed the spotlights at night were for someone who had apparently jumped off a ship that had passed in the opposite direction. I don't know if this was creepy exactly, but it sure scared us. Up by Alaska in rough seas. Our office was below the waterline. On the outside of the ship, right below a sponson, there was a full size I beam running around the outside edge of the office. It was probably 10 inches wide and we used it as a shelf storing full-size binders on it. One day in rough weather six of us were in the office. Three officers, three enlisted, when we heard an enormous bang. So loud that our ears rang and all of us jumped out of our seats. After checking to make sure we weren't taking on water, and calling damage control, we started looking around to determine what could have caused it. We couldn't find anything. Nothing had come loose. Nothing had fallen. The dry tank below the office was still dry, etc. We eventually noticed that the I-beam had cracked. Not a hairline fracture, not a little split, but the entire beam had separated lengthwise by about 5 millimeters. We took a wave up under the sponson with so much energy that it bowed in the hull of the ship and split the beam. But the beam didn't ever go back to the original length. The crack was also precise and even. You could slide a pencil in the gap all the way back to the bulkhead. In fact, the split was so wide they couldn't weld it directly closed. They had to cut a 5mm shim to fill the gap. It was amazing. And we had hundreds of people come through the office for the next couple of weeks to see it. A couple of people tried to calculate the energy needed to instantly separate the I-beam that was 4 feet away from where we were sitting but it was too scary to contemplate. That's my creepy story. Hope you enjoyed. I go to a maritime school for the specific reason to be a pirate, joke. I had our first time at sea and I was told during my deck watch to take the helm. It was a clear day but choppy waters. After I took the helm, as a freshman and first time on a boat at all, there were huge re-waves for us being on a 540 foot cargo ship, which was refitted to be a training ship, added more holes for people to sleep in. So when I was on the helm I see that the whole ship in front of me and the water in front of the ship. 
we would hit the, the swell so that at one point you saw nothing but the bow and the blue sky, and the next moment you see nothing but the water and the bow, and in between the horizon would quickly pass by. After that I changed my major to engineer. No wonder all those deckies are unbelievably stressed out, and huge buttholes for possibly the same reason. Well I guess it's not creepy exactly but it sure freaked me out. I'm not a ship crewman. A buddy of mine is sailing the world and told a story about being adrift on glass smooth seas one evening. He could have turned on his outboard motor but, he was in no rush and fuel can get expensive so, he decided that he'd just wait for wind to eventually come back. So, moonless night, no wind, no waves, but there's a strange mechanical noise out in the ocean. There's no light so, he can't determine what it is and, his flashlight is completely useless. He considers that sound can travel a long long way over a glass smooth ocean so, he's not certain how far away this noise is. He starts considering that maybe it's a submarine and he wonders to himself if submarines ever surface under other boats. So, the day after he tells this story, I go to work. I worked with Navy at the time so, I retell his tale and ask, do submarines ever run into other boats out at sea? Oh, yeah, happens all the freaking time. Just google submarine collision. It seldom means good things for the boat that got hit. Other people are joining the conversation to point out that, all those collisions you'll read about, keep one thing in mind, they were all under power. They were making noise and we still just drove right through them. A sailboat, a drift, PFFT, and, the ascent folk chiming in to mention that the transition between underwater and the surface is really freaking noisy so, it's not like you can tell if something is right above you until it's really too late, anyway. So, I told my buddy and sent him a link to the wikipedia article about all these events. It didn't make him feel any better. I sail on tow ships, with temp crews of young people, 16 18 usually. We discourage ghost creepy stories because there's always some kid who gets inspired and takes it too far, and between rig climbing and weather and the general danger of being at sea, we really don't want that. So no outright creepy stuff, but the sea can be plenty eerie, being in thick fog and hearing sounds that seem close by, but usually aren't, can be pretty chilling. Boys that have sound signals can sound spooky as heck. The way the eye tries to make sense of distances when the sea is mostly flat can be really alarming. Look out, I thought that thing was a mile off and now it is at our bow. Then there is the time we were in the middle of the Atlantic and the main anchor started letting out just after I came off evening watch. I dashed out of the mess and onto the foredeck to ram on the brakes, which turned out later to be about 2-3 seconds before the anchor and chain combined would have been too heavy to haul back in. We had been pounding in an 8 meter swell for days. So I assumed the brakes in the slip must have just rattled loose in the relentless motion. But the bossin swore up and down that he'd double. Secured the slip with rope and that there was no way it could have come loose on its own. I was sailing as a cadet on a 1000 foot plus container ship crossing the Atlantic during the middle of winter leaving the Mediterranean heading to Halifax. We were in 40-50 foot seas. I was sent to check the side port, a hatch on the side of the ship used for taking on stores or a pilot. Our sister ship had a case where her side port was leaking during rough seas. I went down 11 stories to the engine room and took the tunnel to the side port. The ship has two tunnels that run the length of the ship from the engine room at the stern all the way forward to the windlass at the bow. As I was in the tunnel, I looked all the way forward, nearly 1000 feet forward. I could see the ship twisting as we took each wave. Steel was moaning so loudly that it was extremely unnerving to a new mariner. What I saw in the side port was more unnerving. Every time we took a wave, water would rush through the cracks. Luckily there was a bilge pump to take care of that. My job over the next few days was making sure the pump was keeping up. Having a few years more years experience since my cadet days, I have some crazier sea stories dealing from military to smugglers to typhoons. If anyone knows somewhere those might be appreciated, that would be great. The other stories are not creepy, just scary, surprising, and raunchy. Right here would be just fine. Not me, but my brother was stationed in Hawaii, and is currently in the Coast Guard. His first week on island, he's told to investigate a homeless man who was spotted a couple of hundred miles offshore. Apparently he wasn't found offshore, and the two men who called it in were involved in his death. 
He went on to tell me that a couple of longshore fishermen needed one more man for their voyage, but couldn't find anyone. So what do they do? Obviously go to the park and see if a homeless man wants to make a couple hundred bucks. Duh. Anyway, while out at sea, the homeless guy, who was an alcoholic, started to detox, got disoriented, and fell overboard. The fishermen noticed him missing after a few hours, and saw he fell overboard. They might have been anchored at that spot. IDK. These guys call the coast guard, tell them they have a man overboard, get the guy back on board, and stuff him in one of the freezers. My brother said seeing a dead man frozen solid in a freezer was a pretty crappy way to start his time in paradise. Oh, and the guys didn't get charged either, because apparently they haven't persecuted a Shanghai case in about 100 years. I worked as a deckhand on a private 53 feet yacht. I helped deliver it from the east coast of the US to the Virgin Islands with a pit stop in Bermuda. En route to Bermuda, I wake up and head up to accompany the guy on watch and he looks pretty disturbed and points up. Our dong pit had a cloth bimini with a plastic window in the top. Roof thing over the helm for you non-nautical folks. On the plastic window are two boot prints in the salt residue. There's no way anyone could stand on the bimini, it's cloth and would have broken. We never figured out how it happened and the captain brushed it off. Prob so I wouldn't be freaked out since it was my first time at sea. Not terrifying. Definitely weird. It could have been a prank, but no one was laughing. And who would risk losing their boots overboard for a stupid prank? Not me, but my dad's a captain and has some stories. Apparently there's some seasickness medication that's also mildly hallucinogenic, which has caused some problems in the past. Notably, one dude, who had never been that far out to sea before, just ripped off his life jacket, said I didn't sign up for this, and tried to walk off the back of the boat. They had to restrain him, after which he went kinda dead in the eyes for a few hours until he recovered. Another dude claimed to see a dog running around on deck, which is significantly less creepy, albeit still weird. Scopolamine is the medication and can cause hallucinations. That's what is usually in the behind the ear motion sickness patches. When I was younger my family and I were on a friend's pleasure craft in the middle of the Thames River just downstream from electric boat, submarine base factory. The owner powered down both inboard engines so we could relax and have lunch. About an hour later we see a submarine heading for us on its way out to sea. The owner tries to get the engines started, but they were not turning over. It was 10 minutes of watching this massive sub slowly making its way towards us while the owner struggled to get boat going. With 100 yards remaining we finally got the boat started and got out of its path. I like to think that they would alter their path to avoid hitting us. But at 11 years old I was convinced we were going to die. About 4 years back I was involved in a S&R operation off NW Australia. It wasn't uncommon to hear of the immigrant boats going missing and getting the normal keep a good lookout and report messages. This particular boat was estimated to be carrying about 80 people and a full operation was carried out. The second night of the search my cadet called me to the bridge wing where I got a glimpse of a body in the water. We quickly lost sight of it and couldn't tell if it was living but it was face up. We turned around did an intensive search but never saw it again. That face will never leave me. I was bossing on a three-masted schooner. We were sailing down the coast of Brazil and our lookout spotted something orange in the water. Checked it out with binoculars. Determined in was a life jacket so we put the rescue boat in the water and myself and another crew member went to retrieve it. Turned out it was a child's life jacket. Lots of growth and all the distinguishing marks had faded on it so it had been in the ocean for a while. Thankfully no remains came out with it. No idea where it came from or what happened but pulling a child's life jacket out of the water is a sombering experience. Left us pretty chilled. I was a ship's captain in the Israeli Navy. One day we got a severe weather warning. So I headed back to port. On the way there we encountered an Egyptian fishing boat. These boats are typically very colorful, so you can't mistake them. I stopped by the boat and said to the other captain that a big storm is coming, and he should go back to port. He waved to me, but I could see that he didn't take me seriously. A few days later, after the storm came and went, we went out to sea. I found the colorful wreckage of the fishing boat floating in the same area. Must have been 4-5 men aboard. So sad sad. I worked as an inspector on oil rigs. 
and we used ropes and harnesses to access the more difficult areas. I got sent with two other guys to do an inspection of a pentagon rig in a bay in Argentina. It had been sitting there for a couple of years out of use. One of the cross tubular braces needed to be checked. It was a floodable brace, meaning that when the rig was ballasted down it would fill with seawater. It had an open hatchway on the underside with a small steel ladder attached. We abseiled down and managed to get in the hatch. The tubular was about 2 meters tall so we switched on our head torches and started walking along the inside. Moving our heads in circles to look for any problems in the torchlight. There's not much to see, the inside surface of the tubular is painted black, and at any time the torch only illuminates an area of a couple of feet. Then, about 30 meters in as I circle the light up above me, 6 inches away is a white skull with teeth staring down at me. I screamed and ran back towards the hatch. Totally freaked out. Eventually we get brave enough to investigate. The skull is that of a seal. In fact its whole skeleton is there, stuck to the ceiling. We worked out it must have swum inside years ago as the rig was submerging. Failed to find its way out and drowned. Then stuck to the roof underwater as it rotted. Finally, once the rig rose and the water drained out it right but had stayed stuck there. Had a dude who was the radioman on a container ship. Not an officer rated position but stayed on the cadet deck with the other one stroke two way officers. As far as I understood the radioman didn't do crap. Didn't stand watch. Didn't work days, just ate, crap, took up space in the lifeboat and jerked off. I think the billet was some union stipulation or something like that. Anyway this dude was the creepiest thing I'd ever encountered. All he talked about was banging Asian H and his entire existence was centered around port calls where he was the first one down the gangway and the last one up. Worse yet he looked like if Santa Claus shaved himself from head to toe, developed a speech impediment, and sweated all the time. He would film his escapades and take pictures, would talk about the times he made a mistake and discovered a lady boy, just to follow it up with the fact that banged them too. At first I had no clue what this dude would do in port. When I first joined the vessel he asked me and my sea partner if we wanted to see some pics of his time ashore. We were like heck yay. He then busts out an old school album filled with raunchy pics of him laying the wood to Asian H. I almost puked. From that point on we kept our distance. But he kept trying to befriend us BC we now had unwittingly looked at his twisted freaking self P. In the marines back in the 1980s, we had been at sea for only a few weeks. No problems. No food shortages. No worries. A great experience. For the infantry marines on board the ship, the only problem was boredom. Boredom leads to frustration, and frustration leads to stupid decisions over small matters. I did not see this, but too bored. Frustrated infantry personnel were in line for morning chow. A mess a hall worker simply did his job by refilling the selection of those small, individual boxes of cereal. For some reason, the brand Lucky Charms had become the most coveted breakfast item in their infantry minds. When the cereal boxes were placed in view, one box of Lucky Charms was present. A fight ensued. More bored infantry marines joined in. Then more joined in, and a small riot had broken out for this one box of Lucky Charms. When clearer minds had broken up the fight, there was no victor as the cereal box had been destroyed, and its contents spewed across the floor. One of the marines thought he was the victor, as he was holding the largest piece of the destroyed box. Although smiling, he was covered in blood and missing an ear. When the shock wore off, and the adrenaline faded, I'm sure the smile left his face. For infantry marines on ship, boredom is the enemy. I did 20 years in the marines, and have more sea time than Popeye the sailor man. Just an expression. And that was the first story that popped into my head. P. S. I was never in the infantry. Me frosted lucky charms. Imho your story is the more interesting here. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
bye for now.